Hello and welcome to the North Carolina Museum of History and the 25th Annual American Indian Heritage Celebration. Our presenter will begin in just a moment. We want to share a few notes with you. Remember to ask questions in the chat and we'll do our best to respond to them and share them with our presenter. We have many additional resources about American Indians in North Carolina on our website, nc-aihc.com. We thank the following sponsors of the North Carolina Museum of History Foundation, helping to make this event possible. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Julian Hunter. Uh, I'm a wampum, art, a wampum artist. I come from the Meharry Nation here in Northeast North Carolina. Uh, and today I'm going to be doing my presentation of wampum. Um, before I begin, let me say this is the first time I have ever done uh, anything on a webcam seminar. Um, I'm a little camera shy, so bear with me. Uh, I can see April saying hello from Robertson County. Hey, how are you? Uh, if there are any questions along the way, uh, I don't know if I'm able to see them, um, but uh, I will be answering along if I can, if I'm able to. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about wampum and what wampum, uh, what wampum is to our people. Uh, wampum comes from the Quahog clamshell. right here. You can find these in your oceans and you can find them in certain places in some freshwater and some freshwater rivers. Okay. Um, our people, we use these shells to tell our stories. Um, you see, this shell has a, a purple section and a white section. Uh, we, we create our, we create belts out of them and we record histories in such ways. Um, same way some people may write down histories um, on scrolls and and whatnot. So we cut our beads and we tell our stories through our wampum belts. Um, I'm a wampum maker. I'm a second generation, uh, meaning that I learned this from my father. Um, I'm also a third generation shell artist, uh, which means my, my father learned his shell work from his mother, uh, and he passed that down to me. Um, so I'm a little camera shy again, but I'm going to try my best here. Um, I will be going over a couple of things as far as tools. There we go. Uh, I'll be going over a couple of things uh, as far as how to make uh, wampum. So our importance of our wampum, uh, again, we tell our stories by making our belts. Um, also, the, the way we wear our wampum kind of tells our status amongst our people. Um, I'm gonna share some beads with you. These beads here are cut from that shell. And your white beads represent your peace, uh, where your dark beads can represent a time of, of, of um, sorrow or strife, if you will. Um, so our white, our white beads are very important to our, to our people. A lot of times you will see folks wear just our white beads and uh, sometimes you will see high dignitaries wear your purple beads. All right, so if you, you will, this here, our sections here, this is where a lot of our beads come from. Uh, I get a little more light in there. Okay. Right in there. A lot of our beads come from this section here. Uh, on a much larger scale, sometimes we're able to get beads along here inside the lip here. Um, before I go any further, um, I will not be running any tools. The wampum creates a lot of dust 
um, there are a lot of masks that, you know, I, I wear masks and shields to to help protect myself against that dust and I also run water. So before I go any further, I'd like to say that anybody that tries to do this, if you're learning, anybody that tries to do this, please protect yourself with a um, with a good respirator mask, one with hoses and also with a lot of water, okay? Keep that dust down. Julian, where do the shells come from? Uh, these shells, you can find these shells anywhere up and down the East Coast of the United States. Um, you can also find them going into Canada. Uh, these are far as your coastal waters. Uh, right when you get into the Chesapeake Bay, uh, once you start coming south of it, you'll start noticing that um, your shells will kind of get like a lighter purple, almost like a burgundyish color. Uh, but you can also find them in, in rivers as well. Uh, you can find your, um, you can find wamp, wampum shells. Um, so, um, coming here. This is one of my favorite tools here. The, this guy has a tile cutter on it. It also has diamond wheels. What I would do is I would take this shell here and I will cut, start cutting strips coming down. All right, once I cut those strips down, I will take them by hand. Taking my hand and I will start rounding them out just just to touch just just to remove the cart the sharp square corners uh, after I do that I will attach it to a nail head like such and once I attach that to that nail head then that will chuck inside of my drill and I am able to take it along my machine here and to spin it. And as I'm spinning, I will get that perfect round shape. Once I'm done there, I'm able to take a drill bit and to drill a hole in it. All right. Uh, I'm a little unprepared in the sense of I do not have a constructed belt to show you. Uh, but those belts, again, tell a lot of our stories. Um, if you on your own time, we'll go and look up the Hiawatha belt. Um, you will kind of see you can get a visual of that belt and what that represents and what it does represent are uh, at a point in time, five nations coming together and off of that belt, you'll see the two arms coming off and that are all the, the nations that come up under that, that law or that way of life. Um, uh, more than just uh, my people adapt this way of life, um, nations from all over the United States uh, fall under what's known as the great law or the law of peace. Um, so as many nations, uh, not only coastal coastal natives, um, but your Anishinaabe, your, your Mi'kmaq, um, a lot of people from the South and all over, uh, even down into the Mississippis, um, they use these shells. Um, this deep history. Um, so I'm going to share a few more pieces of jewelry with you. Julian, why before you? Before you share more with us, um, can you tell us how um, people before machines were made? How native peoples would have made wampum? Do you know years ago? Yeah. So um, I don't have any old school t uh, tools with me to show you. Um, a lot of those were made on rocks. Um, again, cutting this bead out, uh, if you took a rock with a sharp edge, I'm going to use a ruler here, but if you had a rock with a sharp edge, there we go, and you took this shell, you take it and you scrub that shell. Okay. And that will, again, cut out a, a strip. You know, almost in the shape of this ruler, you would cut out a square strip just like that, and then you would take, you would take that strip and you would run it on your rock and you would start rounding them by edge. Okay, that process, um, all in all, to cut one bead um, would probably it it would a, a, a fast cutter would probably take about two days. I mean, um, I'm sorry, 
you probably a fast coder could get about two beads per day. Um, so the, uh, our machines now today, I'm able to cut a couple of hundred beads a day in today's time. Um, in an old drilling process, this is an old school pump drill. Um, one is made by my aunt Paige. I'll get this set up here. This is an old pump drill here. Um, and what you would do, this pump drill here, you pump this up and down and this cylindrical will start spinning, okay? You get that spun up and down. And once you have it set in motion, it will start almost, um, once you get it, it will come back and then come back and spin back around. But this is what you would use to, this is what you would use to um, drill holes back in the day. Um, the tip here has a nail in it. Uh, old school wise, we would use a piece of shell, um, bulk shell, and that that will that would drill through that hole. Yes, our shells. Yes, yeah, shells come from Chesapeake Bay, and from eastern coastline of of, uh, of North Carolina. How soft hard is the shell and how thick are you looking for? Uh, depending on what you're wanting to make, um, the shells are hard. Um, quahog meaning hard shell clam, they are pretty hard. The consistency of it is almost about like towel, um, like towel, ceramic towel. Um, so, and pretty much on that idea, anything that will, will cut your, your ceramics or your towels, um, can cut wampum. Were women the traditional makers of wampum? That is a good question, Verna. Um, while I imagine that some women may have made wampum, were they traditional makers of wampum? Uh, I interpret, oh, oh my goodness, where did I go? Oh my goodness. Can you help me get back? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, um, the way I interpret the question, um, were they tr the traditional makers of wampum the only makers of wampum? Uh, I do not know that to be true. Um, I know our men were the makers of wampum, but um, whether women were allowed to make wampum, um, I do not know that, that answer, but I imagine women, women were wampum makers as well. Are beads ever colored or are they left in their natural state? Um, wampum, so your, 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 your natural purple that are in these shells, um, this is a natural color. Uh, we, I do not know of anyone that dyes wampum uh, to produce that purple color. Um, you, need, you need both your purple and your white to tell your stories when making your belts. Um, so the natural purple is it's what's traditional in telling these stories. Um, there are certain designs where I've seen white uh, white sections um, dyed to make different. Well, that's a new design I'm coming with myself, but um, I'll be taking white and I'll be dyeing whites um, to produce different colors outside of just white and purples. Uh, I'll be crushing it down to um, kind of make kind of pictorial designs, uh, but I do not know of any other, um, I do not know of dying beads, um, if that makes sense, but your whites and your naturals are all purples and that's that's what gives your stories. Um, I'm gonna share a few other things with you. So this, uh, please keep the questions coming. Again, I, I am kind of camera shy um, this is the first time I've done something online and usually I'm a little, a little, um, a little, this, this is different. Um, this is a piece here I'm sharing. This is a piece that, uh, these are my wampum beads that I cut here, my wampum cabs and 
I have some beads lined up in here inside the flower petals. Um, this is a piece beaded by my cousin Belinda. This is a bracelet. This is a custom made bracelet um, that I made for a person that I trade shells with. So this is one of the biggest ways that I get shells. Um, I am not exactly on the coast. Uh, I live maybe about an hour and a half um, from the waterline. Uh, so one of the biggest ways for me that I'm able to get my shells are through trade. Um, during good traveling seasons, I have family that live all up and down the coast. Um, my stepmother lives on the reservation in Shinnecock. Uh, and a lot of times I, when I go there, I stay with her. I'll do a lot of clamming in her backyard. Um, and I'm able to feed my family that way and also, you know, put uh, food inside her freezer for the winter times. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good thing. It's a fun connection with the water. That's also one of the things my father taught me is how to clam. Um, no tools, um, just sock, just take your socks and shoes off and go in and fill for them. And um, that's one of the things that I've passed down to my kids. They can, they, they, they have some water, some good water, then they know how to feed themselves. Um, let's go over a couple more things. So this is, um, I'm gonna show a difference uh, in, in a little bit of the process. Can you get a tumble barrel? Um, Start getting into your big beads. Um, this is where a lot of status comes in. Uh, a lot of people, you may have heard wampum is money. Um, um, in the traditional sense, wampum is a medicine. Uh, when the um, settlers come over and they saw how we used it and how we use it today still, um, they kind of in turn, they turned it in, into, um, they gave it a money system value. Okay, uh, these are natural beads that were cut into round shapes and they're, and they're drilled through. Uh, so this is kind of my style, what I like to wear. This is more of a, a raw traditional sense here. Um, just a straight natural, there's no polish on this. I don't know if you can see the matte kind of texture to it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take those beads if uh, somebody is looking for a nice clean polish, uh, what I'll do is I'll take the, the take those beads and I'll stick them into a tumbler barrel. Uh, there is about, there is exactly six different stages that go through this barrel to produce the roundness that comes in. Um, that barrel saves me a lot of time, um, but also it's, it's one of my favorite tools to use when uh, working wampum uh, because it is the natural it is the natural way of, of being cut, almost like being in the ocean. Did you know the stories told by the wampum? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? The stories that the wampum that you made, what, what stories do they tell and do they have a connection to the Meharan tribe specifically? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. I do not have any work at the moment. Uh, my work gets a little popular. Um, so I don't, I don't really have, I'm sorry, I'm a little unprepared. You know, I don't have any work with me on hand to be able to show that connection. Um, I'm sorry. Um, but our, our work, uh, a lot of our work, a lot of what I do is comes from a contemporary style. Um, a lot of the things that I'm able to produce today um, comes from the machines that, you know, we have today. Um, so a lot of, I am, in a sense, uh, over the last few years, I've become more of a wampum maker. And what that means is I make a lot of raw designs or a lot of raw cut pieces uh in general i give those to people and they make their and they make their arts and their designs um one design here i do have this is another piece made by my cousin belinda uh as you see the strawberry in the beginning of the year um our first ceremony is the strawberry ceremony and that represents the the harvest of um that represents the start of, of life 
Um, and so this is one piece that does kind of represents, you know, it gives connections to one of our ceremonies here, um, not necessarily made in wampum, uh, but you can see the wampum adornments that are made within this piece. Um, a lot of my work, um, you know, again, a lot of my work goes out to, to various people that, that, uh, that use it to make their own designs. Um, this is a piece of silver. I do sell my work. Um, I do. Um, this is a piece of silver work um, that, again, I just made the wampum here and an artist done to silver. Uh, so that's been a lot of my work over the past years. Um, if you take a stroll, um, if you can find me on Facebook, uh, Julian Hunter, uh, or my hair and outpost, and you can kind of go through my photos and you can see um, a lot of my work. I wish I had something on hand, but um, you could see a lot of my work um, that represents that represents into our people. Uh, the word wampum, the word wampum, um, so the word wampum actually comes from the Narragansett language. Um, that is a that is a word that is used, you know, throughout Indian country um, to describe the shell. So there's a, a start. Um, forgive me, I'll come back to that. Um, my wife just brought this down. This is a loom here. Um, this is this is a very small loom. This is a this is a word that I use. Um, this is a loom that I use when I'm traveling. Uh, really quick and simple, something I, I can fold up pretty simple and put away. Uh, but this is the start of a bracelet uh, that is for a family member. Uh, so this is kind of how the designs are done um, on the belt there in this way. Um, so this this has a mixed bead. This is pretty much just a wraparound bracelet. Um, when you get into string and, and you have your stories, again, you use your white and your purple sections. Um, and those, those tell your stories. Um, those stories that are recorded can tell anything from um, events, births, um, and pretty much anything, pretty much anything, records, um, treaties, friendship, kinships. Julian, folks want to know if you've done something with Nike. <laughs> I really don't want to discuss discuss that um all righty then we won't discuss that i'm so sorry i'm sorry, I'm sorry. i think somebody I'm saw sorry. it on um, some social media so i was asked at the beginning of the presentation to speak about um to because there i believe there was only two presenters from a hair nation um so i was asked to present um a little more along our people but i was also asked to kind of stick towards um Welcome. So I'm not a speaker of my people. Um, simply put, I, I kind of wanted to kind of stay geared toward wampum, um, if that if that makes sense. Um, but I do not want to speak about the um, the thing going on with Nike. Um, All right, we won't speak about that. But so tell us. If I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Yeah. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. So, it's, it's and hard. I understand that you don't have, um, because you're making the raw materials, do other people from other tribes use the wampum that you create? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, my wampum goes, um, my wampum carries from coast to coast um, and, and even into Canada. Um, there are a lot of people that use uh, my wampum for beadworks. This is from... This is a pair of earrings my daughter brought down. Uh, these are made from a girl from a neighboring tribe. Um, Tristan, if, if anybody knows Tristan, you know she does does beautiful work. Um, she's from the Halawasa Pony people. Um, but my my a lot of my wampum ends up in ceremonies. Um, 
these beads here, uh, they're solid white beads. Uh, your solid white beads, again, they, they represent your, your peace and your unity. Um, the solid white beads kind of, they represent your peace and unity. Um, and these are beads that, you know, you would give these, um, you know, to friendship, you know, if you wanted to kind of represent your peace, you know, you would give this to a neighbor or to, a, you know, somebody from a neighboring tribe to, uh, you know, to, to give your peace. And um, any more questions? Yeah, Julian, tell us um, what other materials do you work with besides wampum? I know you said you had uh, friends and relatives that help with beading, but what other materials are used? And do you use only traditional materials or contemporary ones? Um, I use traditional and contemporary. Um, I use, so as far as shell work, I use um, spiny oysters, I use conch shells, um, abalone. I will pretty much use anything that comes out of the water um, as far as it, you know, when it comes into designing. Uh, if it works and it, it, it incorporates well with my wampum. Um, I use, I do use a lot of stone. Um, or not a lot of stone. I use a little bit of stone, turquoises, onyx, um, lapis, different, you know, um, different stone as long as it kind of incorporates well. Uh, I also use bone. Will you grab me some bone? A bone, please. Uh, I use a lot of bone and antler in my work as well. Um, and I'll, I'll take it and carve the antler and then uh, inlay and embellish those 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 um, antlers and bones with my wampum as well. And so you said you're second generation. Who taught you and, and what age were you when you learned? Uh, I, I was taught by my father. Um, I was maybe, let's say I was about 10 years old when he started me out with drilling beads. Um, that will have to be the hardest thing. That's the hardest part of the process. Um, I have to say is drilling. Um, you can take all the time in the world to shape and spin, uh, but the drilling part is going to be one of the most tedious things. Um, so right around the age of 10 is when I started started drilling. Um, I picked up on it pretty, pretty big uh, around the age of 16. I was helping him out a lot. And, uh, and then I kind of um, uh, want to say I took over the family business uh, at the age of 19, um, starting out and traveling with my family. Um, and one of these days, um, one of these days, my kids will, will get a little more into it. Right now, they don't help me cut. Uh, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of uh, discipline to be able to work with this shell. Um, it can be, it can be very deadly and toxin. You're dealing with the dust and um, so when the time is right for them, uh, they will start helping with the cut. But they do a lot. They help me a lot with planning. They help me a lot with designing and uh, bead working uh, uh, also in the household. I'm just sharing a little bit of antler. Um, what I'll do with these guys, I like to slice them. I'll slice them, uh, make thin slices, and then I'll carve around the edges and then and lay whop them inside the center of them. Uh, also, I'll take them and I'll make knife handles and I will inlay wampum in the backside on the opposite end. This piece I'm going to share with you, uh, this is a piece my daughter designed here. My daughter, Juliana. Uh, she uh, is kind of my tech girl. She is the one that had to help me get uh, all of this set up as far as the, the, <laughs> the computer and all. I'm not, I'm not too tech savvy. Uh, come on over. This is my daughter Juliana. Welcome, <laughs> but this Juliana. is one that she designed here. That's a beautiful design. You're very talented. Thank you. And so, um, I'm hearing are known as the people of the water, and it seems to me that you're very connected to that through your work and your handicraft. Does that resonate with you at all? 
Yes, definitely. Um, we we spend a lot of time in the water uh, whenever we can. Um, I am more prone to get into ocean water before I get in a swimming pool. Um, just just the salt water and that filling. Um, so that's one of the things I've taught my kids very early on. And as we go clamming, um, you know, it provides it provides us a way of living. Um, I do recognize that I have a gift, and it also you know it it allows me to to touch base within that gift. And I also I make my ways of giving back to that water and you know, giving my thanks for, for everything that I'm given and as far as my gifts and, and uh, I'm very connected with my waters. That's, that's absolutely lovely. I really appreciate that and how it is demonstrated in everything you do. Um, that's very meaningful. Thank you. Can you talk just a little bit more or repeat because we've had some people join about the, what wampum means to Native peoples today, what wampum meant to Native peoples in the past, because I think that meaning has been skewed by non-Native peoples. Um, yeah, so it, I think this presentation would have been better if I kind of, kind of just kind of made some bulletins and sat down. I had a lot of, I think I, I come up with about 30 minutes of raw talking. And as soon as I got on camera, I kind of got a little camera shot. You're shy. doing great, Glenn, where <laughs> everybody is so excited. You have no idea the comments are blowing up. Are you kidding? We are loving this. We want you to talk for hours. So if we keep, if I keep interrupting, just say stop and just start talking how you want to talk. Go. No, no, you're fine. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to the audience to kind of come in and, 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 and help with that. Um, like I said, I, I, I had a good 30 minutes of solid um, talk time, and then it just just went blank as soon as the camera come on. Um, but yeah, wampum, wampum to our people. Um, wampum represents a, a way of life. Um, it, re it represents that good doing. Um, and to wear to wear wampum kind of uh, it it kind of it kind of shows that you um, follow a certain a certain lifestyle, um, a certain way of living. Um, and that's just you know just just a good person, a good well being. Um, Today, today, wampum has has gotten so much into fashion um, that I think some people kind of forget the the reason that we wear our wampums. Um, it's not just to it's not just to show your status. Um, even though our wampum, you know, when you go when you go to your neighboring tribes and you you know you give your you give your wampums is is not just about making connections or peace. When you see when you see a person wearing wampum, um, it, it's supposed to represent a person that carries a certain way of life and that will be in, um, amongst all of our peoples. Um, so, and again, that goes back to the 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 polished and the unpolished. Um, your your unpolished is a little more traditional, whereas your your polish is more of a, a contemporary style of thing today. Um, your white wampum. Your white wampum is, is, you know, represents your peace. It represents your unity uh, within yourself, and your dark can represent the opposite. However, you need the two to tell your stories when you're creating your belts and you're creating the stories. Um, and our, those stories, again, were created for um, for records, for records' sake. Um, the same way, the same way that things are written on paper, are the same way that. Um, that wampum belts are created and for that same purpose of telling your stories and telling your, you know, your dates, your events, marriages, um, kinships, uh, different events, births. Um, so so um, is wampum something you wear most days or just um, do you wear it with regalia? Um, yeah, we, um, so everyone in my family wears wampum just about every day. That's my wife's, um, that is my wife's number one friend is her wampum. Uh, she loves wearing her earrings um, that I made for her. <laughs> uh, me, personally, I wear, I wear my wampums when I, I go out in public. Um, I pretty much work 24-7, um, so I'm working with these tools. So a lot of times, this guy, this one is one of my favorite pieces here. Um, so sometimes I wear it when I go out, uh, when I go out somewhere, you know, special, 
Um, then I have special pieces that um, from my father that I wear uh, when I'm not when I'm not busy working. I don't really wear a lot of jewelry because uh, I'm pretty much working on these working on my machines here. Um, this is one just one of my mini machines. Uh, again, this has a waterline hookup. Um, that is one of the most important parts of working your wampum is having your water hookups. Uh, that the our wampum, the job of these guys are to filter our waters. Uh, so a lot of the pollutions and the buildups that that happen in the ocean, our our clams are filtering those every day. Not just our clams, but our mussels and and also a lot of this dust that is produced on top of this shell becomes pretty toxic. Um, once you grind that down. This is what you're looking at. So that, that natural color is also on the outside of the shell as well as the inside. So it makes me wonder how native peoples thousands of years ago discovered that, you know, I guess that's lost in time, but it's amazing how American Indians throughout history have used things around them to not only create things they need, but to create beauty and to make meaning. And so making these wampum belts to tell stories, it also recorded history. And do you think um, the belts would have been understood by different communities, different tribal communities? Um, yeah, today, today we have a Today we have an understanding of, of those symbols and what those those symbols mean in our belts. Um, whereas there's a much broader um, understanding and what those symbols meant, um, you know, in those times, uh, in older times. Um, today it may take somebody a little, you know, a little longer to read to read a symbol, you know, to read a belt with with all the symbols. Um, just a little longer than what somebody would be able to read before because that's that's. That's um, that was just um, that was the form of writing um, in in older times. Uh, but today, yeah, these belts can still be read and still be understood uh, by 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 people today. Um, to kind of go a little further into um, answering your question, there, um, there in this shell here, um, there, there's a, if you heard me mention before the the Hiawatha belt um that represents the people coming together um yes. if you can see this here yes that warrior hiawatha lost somebody very important to him he lost his daughter and as it, when he was walking he found a piece of wampum that was in the water okay and that water had washed away and here if you look um it almost looks almost like a lady wow. with her hair coming in into the just her hair breathing breathing okay um when he found that shell there's um a little more into that um if you want to um maybe google maybe you can maybe you can get a little more of that story um in the past time, I don't want to bring it up into the presentation now. Um, again, certain parts of the wampum shell represents um, a certain way of living and the other part represents another way of living. Uh, and I want to stay on the um, the moving forward part. Uh, but that represented, when he found this shell, he saw that, that lady in there and it, it, um, he took that, um, he took it as representation of his daughter and it made him happy. Um, so this is how wampum comes about to certain nations um, and making those beads. And um, that Hiawatha belt, again, that represents a belt that represents all of the nations coming together. Um, you'll see five sections of those belts uh, that represent some of the original, that represents the original five nations. And then off of that are those arms. And that represents all of the nations that came under that way of living um so that rep that covers 
so many nations, not not just um, Iroquois or Haudenosaunee, Longhouse people. Um, it covers so many people, um, even into the Midwest, um, down south, there are ways and traditions um, that were shared um, amongst our, you know, our, amongst our brothers and sisters, even down into Florida, those, uh, those dances and those, those practices were shared down south as, as well. Um, so again, I'm, I'm sorry I had a really long presentation put together, and then as soon as the camera hit my face, I just went boom. You're doing wonderfully, um, and I did not realize you know, the Hiawatha Belt uh, represented more than the Iroquoian nation. So right there, I'm learning. I'm learning because I know the Meharan is related to that. So you're doing wonderfully. Everybody's very happy um, with what you're sharing. No worries. I've The spiritual aspect of wampum is something I think that needs to be reinforced. We don't um, share that story and that aspect of its meaning. Um, and, and I'm impressed that you, um, as a wampum artist, you're willing to share that with non-native peoples. Um, I, I think that's lovely. Yes. Um, today it's a little different. There, um, so the presentation is, is a little hard because it's, um, again, I think it just got a little camera struck because there are, it's almost like there, there is two sides of wampum today. There is, um it's become so commercialized today that it's it's hard you, you try to speak from one perspective when people know um a totally different perspective um and so spiritually wampum um even today um uh when people uh, when people pass on that you you know as, as a wampum maker it is my duty to, to make wampum for people and give it to people uh, in times of need, um, free of charge. That's part of the gift that I have. Um, so there, there's a spiritual side, even though this, even though the gift helps, you know, it helps feed my family. There's also a responsibility, a responsibility that I carry with it. Um, so it's, um, it's a, it's a good thing to have. Um, I, I, you know, I, I love the way of life. Um, I enjoy it. Um, um, it's just the way of life. It's, it's, it's really all I know as far as, you know, as far as that goes. Um, I think that's absolutely beautiful. It underpins and intertwines who you are and everything you do. And I think you're speaking so beautifully to that. Um, we have just a couple of minutes left. If there's anything else you want to share or any other questions from our attendees, now is the time before we have to wrap this up. Somebody is asking you again about the safety aspects. Uh, the safety aspects. Um, if you are wanting to get into into wampum, um, what I can say is this: I will be starting. I will be starting a um, a series uh, coming shortly. I'm waiting on a little bit of equipment to come in so I can try to take uh, some some really good professional videos um, on Facebook. Um, to answer you shortly now at the, you know, at this very moment, the, your biggest friend with working with wampum is water. Um, traditionally old school way, you know, again, you would take those, you would take those rocks and they're, they're sitting in the depths of the water. Um, you know, again, you know, if you, if you just kind of imagine this being a rock, it wouldn't be quite as sharp. Um, but you would take this and you would scrub it, okay? That water, that water is going to be your, your best friend. Um, I understand, and there's some some cases and scenarios where you end up with little little dusties and powders on your hands. Um, get a good respirator mask. Um, a really really good one is going to cost you upwards of two hundred three hundred dollars. Um, uh, if you find me on Facebook, then I can give you I can give you some some links and stuff like that. I, I can't really provide them right here. Um, but find me on Facebook and I can go further into details on, on certain things. Again, I, I am sorry for my presentation. I had a really, I had a really good, strong oral presentation built up. And then as soon as I hit the camera, it just went bam. So I'm not, you know, I'm not the strongest person on camera. Um, but find me on Facebook um, and I can give you better advice as far as your safety procedures uh, with that. Um, not only, you know, uh, not only do I wear a mask, but I, I also like to wear gloves. 
uh, our waters today are very different from our waters um, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. Our waters are very dirty today. Uh, so even just working with the with the toxins in that water, if you have a cut on your hand and it gets into your bloodstream, then it, then it's in your bloodstream. Um, so me personally, I, I do wear I do wear gloves um, when I'm working. All right. Well, Julian, um, I despite what you think is camera shyness, you have come across as someone who is profoundly um, involved in <laughs> the uh, meaning to you and your culture and your people of wampum. And I think we've all learned so much today. And I know I personally am going to uh, go do a lot more reading about it. And um, I, I appreciate you motivating all of us to do that. I don't Everybody in the chat is saying, thank you. You're wonderful. You're amazing. They're all going to go find you. Um, but thank you very much. We're going to wrap this up now. This will become a v uh, video that people can watch after the fact, and we can share further. Julian, thank you so much for being available today in a new format, and you were perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.